untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. For today's deck, my Patreon supporters voted that I should build a deck around Dollhouse of Horrors, the 5 mana artifact from Crimson Vow, can pay 1 mana tap and exile a creature card from our graveyard to create a token that's a copy of the exiled creature, except it's a 0-0 construct artifact in addition to its other types, and it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each construct we control, including itself, and that token also gains haste until end of turn, and we can only use the dollhouse at sorcery speed. So the dollhouse wasn't an easy card to build around, tried a lot of different variations. On the one hand we might want some acceleration to play it and activate it since it's essentially 6 mana, which is pretty slow, but on the other hand we also need enough interaction to survive long enough to be able to use the dollhouse repeatedly, but then we also need to make sure we have enough creatures in the first place to consistently bring back from the graveyard, so a lot of things we need to balance, and then at the same time we also need to make sure the deck is distinctly different from a typical reanimator deck that would use 5 mana sorceries to reanimate creatures instead. So that was quite the puzzle to solve, but I ended up with this blue-black sacrifice reanimator deck featuring some very exciting creatures to potentially bring back with our dollhouse, and at the same time we've got a bit of acceleration thanks to our treasure tokens from Shambling Ghast, Deadly Dispute and Skullport Merchant, and then by sacrificing creatures we make sure we have enough stuff in the graveyard to keep bringing back with our dollhouse. So I think this deck strikes a nice balance. Some of the expensive creatures we can reanimate include the full playset of Hullbreaker Horror, a 7 mana 7-8 seven, with flash that cannot be countered, and whenever we cast a spell we can either return target spell we don't control to its owner's hand, or return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So we can potentially reanimate the Hullbreaker Horror for just 1 mana, and then still have a bit of mana left over to trigger the ability and bounce a whole bunch of permanents back to the opponent's hand. Then we also have three copies of Toxtril the Corrosive, a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven legendary slug horror, saying at the beginning of each end step, including the opponent's end step, put a slime counter on each creature you don't control, and creatures we don't control get minus one minus one for each slime counter on them, and whenever a creature we don't control with a slime counter on it dies, we also get to create a 1-1 one, one, a black slug creature token, and for a blue and a black we can sacrifice any slug, including Toxrill itself, to draw a card. So an excellent creature to reanimate, but of course, thanks to the treasures, we can also sometimes just hard cast some of these 7 mana creatures instead. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, pretty typical black sacrifice deck, featuring 4 copies of Eye Twitch, 1-1 one, one flyer that when it dies lets us learn, and going over our sideboard lessons in best of one here we've got 7, including 2 copies of Environmental Sciences to find a land and gain 2 life, Teachings to draw more cards if the opponent has more cards in hand than we do, Necrotic Fumes as removal, Introduction to Prophecy for more card draw, and 2 copies of Mascot Exhibition which can help close out the game. And the cool part about these cards that let us learn, like the Eye Twitch, or 3 copies of Hunt, and or 3 copies of Divide by Zero, is that we can always decide to discard and draw instead of grabbing a card out of our sideboard, which means we can easily discard our Hullbreaker Horror and Toxrill to then reanimate with our Dollhouse of Horrors if we have one at the ready. Then we also have the full play set of Shambling Gas, 1-1 one, one, that when it dies either creates a treasure or gives a creature minus 1-1 one, minus one until end of turn, perfect to set up a turn 2 deadly dispute, sacrificing a creature at instant speed to draw 2 cards and create a treasure token, which can then help us ramp into Dollhouse and the various 7 mana creatures. Got 3 copies of Hunt for Specimens, making a 1-1 pest token that when it dies it gains 1 life, and we can learn as well. 3 copies of the Meathook Massacre as an excellent sweeper, giving all creatures minus x minus x until end of turn, whenever a creature we control dies each opponent loses 1 life, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies we gain 1 life, and we can even bounce the Meathook Massacre back to our hands to replay it thanks to Divide by 0, returning target spell or permanent with mana value 1 or greater to its owner's hand, also lets us learn, and then it's also a potential answer to opposing copies of Hullbreaker Horror, which is uncounterable, but we can still bounce it back to the opponent's hand on the stack, thanks to Divide by Zero. Also gives us another instant to potentially trigger the Hullbreaker Horror, so we can make use of the counter spell ability. And then the full playset of Skullport Merchant, a 1-4 that makes a treasure, can also pay 1 on a black to sacrifice another creature or treasure to draw a card. And then we've discussed our 4 copies of Dollhouse, Hullbreaker Horror and 3 copies of Toxrill. 
Then going over the mana base, we've got two copies of Field of Ruin to deal with opposing creature lands, two creature lands ourselves with Hive of the Eye Tyrant turning into a 3-3 with Menace that can exile cards from the opponent's graveyard, then four basic islands, eight basic swamps, then four of the blue-black pathway, and four copies of Shipwreck Marsh. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Shambling Ghast into Hunt, could discard Toxtril to then reanimate with Dollhouse. Especially powerful if we're up against a Mono White Aggro deck. And there's turn 2 Adversary. Alrighty, so... Yeah, I think we make that play. And then we just gotta hope... Our opponent doesn't have an elite spellbinder here to ruin our fun. Could block with shambling ghasts. And make a treasure, although it still doesn't let me cast Dollhouse next turn. So I guess we'll block with a pest for now instead. Seems like a fine trade. And there's a spellbinder anyway. So that's gonna exile the Dollhouse. And then we can still maybe sacrifice Shambling Gas later to kill the Spellbinder. And I guess we'll attack if our opponent trades, we'll make treasure. Now there's an adversary to pump Spellbinder, so it can attack past Eye Twitch. In which case, I guess I'll take four. I could jump and learn and get teachings to keep hitting my land drops. Maybe that's fine. And a Meat Hook Massacre are going to be awesome here. Probably still worth it to play an extra eye twitch. Thalia. Gonna make Dollhouse cost 8. Still a bargain. And we'll prevent a bit of damage here. And then... Could learn for sciences to keep hitting my lands. Always a safe choice. Alright, Dollhouse number two is gonna be great. So let's massacre for two. And make a couple treasures. So I'm liking my position. The Luminarch gets out of Toxtral range for now. We'll see if they have an answer. And then on the opponent's end step, they'll get more counters. And in our turn, the Aspirin's finally gonna die. Get a second Dollhouse coming up so we can double activate. Can easily take a hit. So, our opponent drew some good cards in the matchup. Thalia, Spellbinder are good disruptive creatures, but just wasn't enough here. So yeah, can activate Dollhouse twice. Getting back double eye twitch seems good. Get some nice 3-3 three, three flyers. And then Haven picked up a counter, so it's a 3-2. Still don't want to attack with Toxrill, but eye twitch can attack. 
get some slugs. Yeah, this feels pretty unfair. So yeah, Dollhouse doing what it was designed to do in the deck. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand has many copies of Sculptor Merchant. Um, I guess we'll try it. At least we've got a Shambling Gas to play early. And then triple Skullport will help us ramp into whatever 7-drop we draw. Opponent on blue-white might be a control deck. They've got their own Field of Ruin to answer my Hive. Get in for two. I'm okay with them using Field of Ruin on my Field of Ruin, but they're gonna go with a Hive instead. Grab my blue mana. So opponent hasn't cast a spell yet. A deadly dispute was an excellent draw. So we'll get in and then wait to see what our opponent does. Maybe they cast a memory deluge here. So would I want my deadly dispute to get countered or do I want to let my opponent resolve deluge and then cast deadly dispute in response? Yeah, that's probably fine here. Right, opponent's gonna expel Skullport Merchant. In response, I guess I could just deadly dispute Skullport Merchant itself. Although I might want to sacrifice a Shambling Ghast first, I would lose all my pressure I have in play. But I would uh, potentially get a bit of extra value if my opponent casts like a Sweeper next turn. So sure. Make a treasure. And we could still draw into a divide by zero and be able to cast it. Alright, backup disputes, more one mana creatures we can sacrifice. Just missing our dollhouse and our big finishers. So. Might want to cast a Merchant here, using Field of Ruin in case I decide to Field of Ruin my Field of Ruin. So we have an extra mana to work with. Now our opponent's probably playing their own Hullbreakers that we have to watch out for. I'll play Night Witch and then still have Deadly Dispute available. There's a deluge at long last. Yeah, that resolves. Opponent foretells a card. And then do I want to deadly dispute here? I kind of do, although I could untap first and only waste one mana. Yeah, let's uh, Deadly Dispute now. And then do I want to sacrifice Eye Twitch or Shambling Ghast? Probably Shambling Ghast for now. Because I might want to discard with the Learn from Eye Twitch if I draw into a 7 mana card and a Dollhouse. That resolves. Alright, picked up a Hole Breaker and a Divide by Zero. Both excellent here. For now, play a land and I'm tempted to just pass. Opponent untaps. And I would love for them to tap out for an Elrond's Epiphany. Right, it's gonna be a Doomscar instead. 
that's probably worth dividing. And then I could still flash in a Holebreaker end of turn. And then what do I learn? There's a chance I would have fewer cards in hand and uh, I can leverage teachings. Didn't think it's quite a time for mascot exhibition yet. Could always go for environmental sciences as kind of a safe pick here. Let's go with teachings. Since I'm likely to flash in Holebreaker Horror end of turn. Which my opponent can't counter, so that doesn't leave many answers. I guess they could have the two mana white removal spell. But I guess that's a risk I'm willing to take. Alright, they had the Fateful Absence, unfortunately. At least I can still teachings here. And then maybe resolve a Dollhouse of Horrors if we pick one up. Alright, Toxrill and another Deadly Dispute. So, can attack for two. And what's next? Probably play Shambling Ghasts, hang on to Deadly Disputes. Do I want to Field of Ruin to Field of Ruin now? Probably not. Wait for them to play Hall of the Storm Giants. Opponent replays the Doomscar we knew about. And then I can sacrifice Shambling Gas to Deadly Disputes. Making a treasure. And sacrifice Eye Twitch. And then now do I want to learn for a mascot exhibition? Maybe. Another hole breaker is great. We'll let the uh, merchant go. And then we'll see what else they do. Nothing. So could play another sculptor merchants. And then try and flash in another hole breaker end of turn. That seems fine. If they try and Field of Ruin my Field of Ruin, I could potentially respond. Opponents could have Divide by Zero on Skullport Merchants. That happens. Divide by Zero would have been a pretty great answer to Holebreaker, so... Opponent foretells another card and goes for teachings. So let's see here. Right now, if I cast a whole breaker, I would avoid them drawing an extra card basically, which seems worth it. Unless they have another divide by zero. Right, so they only draw two. And they can't cast Doomscar since they foretold this on the same turn. But an Into the Royal with Kicker will work. Alright, so don't have any instants in hand to combine with the Holebreaker, unfortunately. Which is kind of what I was hoping for. So we won't be able to use it to counter anything. Probably want to start deploying more stuff to the board. Sunset Revelry resolves, just gains life and makes a couple tokens.
And then what's next? Could sacrifice shambling ghasts. Make an extra treasure. Draw cards, and then we can sacrifice the clue token here at long last. More hole breakers. And there's the dollhouse. Alright, so we've got quite a few options available. Opponent might have their own hole breaker horror in hand here that they can flash in. Could try and resolve Toxrill. Dollhouse right now could bring back our own Hullbreaker. Although without any instance, it's not really gonna be at its best. So step one's probably to attack with Eye Twitch. And then yeah, for opponent's plan is to go hole breaker into untap, maybe take an extra turn with Epiphany. That could be bad. Which is a reason to just hang on to double hole breaker here. How much mana are we working with? 13, so not quite enough for double hole breaker. But I could dollhouse back a hole breaker and then be able to flash in the author. So maybe that's the play, as opposed to Toxrill to wipe the one ones. I guess we'll try that. That resolves. Bring back Hullbreaker. Right, just a fading hope. I guess in that case, do I want to sacrifice the token to merchants or do I want to keep the other Hullbreaker available? I guess we'll sacrifice it. Would love to pick up another Divide by Zero. So now our opponent doesn't have the mana for their own Hull Breakers, so it's less concerned about tapping out. Alright, it's going to be a Leer, letting them replay all those cards from the graveyard. And that's potentially a problem too. So let's see here. If I go for a Hull Breaker, they would probably divide by zero it, or they can bounce it with Into the Royal or Fading Hope. So a lot of cheap answers. Is there a way for me to easily kill Leer? I could hunt, get a Necrotic Fumes. That could work. Could also learn and discard a creature to then reanimate. I think we'll start with hunt, get Necrotic Fumes. And see how this plays out. And then I don't want to exile Eye Twitch because then we don't get to learn with it. And opponent divides the Necronic Fumes. In which case, I'll try again. Although I might want to, might want to sacrifice the eye twitch, and then learn by discarding Toxril, and then I can Necrotic Fume Slayer once again using Sculpt Merchants. And they're gonna bounce it back, fair enough. And then now we can dollhouse back Toxrill, which will wipe away the tokens. And make a couple 1-1s one in the process. 
Unless they've got another Fading Hope. Alright, that's too bad. So opponent can replay Leer. And then Hunt for Specimens. Can uh, discard another one of my big creatures to then reanimate. Opponent's still working with Into the Royal, extra Fading Hope now. And a couple of removal spells. So what's the best course of action? Let's just cast a whole breaker here. And then hunt for specimens. Discarding... Toxtrill once again, bouncing Leer. Opponent's gonna bounce the whole breaker, that's fine. Still hoping to draw another Divide by Zero. And then I probably should not attack on the off chance that our opponent has another Expel in hand. Alright, so make a couple slugs. So now we've got a better board presence. Opponent casts a Doomscar, that's fine. Could sack a slug to draw. Doesn't seem necessary. And now the Meat Hook Massacre is another answer to Leer. Opponent gets to draw two. And then just having a Meat Hook Massacre in play can already start draining the opponent here. So, also tempted to pass with double Hullbreaker Horror available. Opponent does have a bunch more removal they can play, but if we can bounce Leer, that kind of limits what the opponent can do. And then I probably want to use the Dollhouse on, let's say, an Eye Twitch. And get in for one. So there's Leer again. Which... Probably want to let resolve because if I go double hull breaker to bounce it back to their hand and they cast Doomscar, we would be pretty sad. So we'll hull breaker. Let's see if they have a response. Fateful absence. So I could hull breaker bouncing the hull breaker back. Or I could bounce Leer. Probably bounce the whole breaker back. And then we can keep looping these basically. Okay. So what's next? I'm out of big creatures to reanimate. Could always meet Hook Massacre for four here to try and kill Leer, which would probably have my opponent respond with Into the Royal, their own Leer. Um, but then I still have a meat Hook Massacre in play at least, which can start draining them. So I think that's fine.
and our opponent won't be able to counter this because Leer's in play, avoiding any counter spells. And then I don't think I'm bouncing anything. Alright, here's something on watch to give Leer plus one plus one. Fair enough. Was not expecting that. But I can bring back a Shambling Ghast to still finish off Leer here. And then learn for maybe environmental sciences as opposed to discarding. So I'll play a Skullport Merchant. And then I could bounce back the Meat Hook Massacre as well. Right, opponent's gonna bounce the Hole Breaker. But now we can finally kill Lear, although I can imagine our opponent has a backup by now. So yeah, the plan would be reanimate a Shambling Ghast here, for instance. Although I might want to just replay Meat Hook Massacre as well. But this seems fine. Can attack for one. And then sacrifice, giving Leer minus one, minus one. Okay, and then we'll pass it back. Let's see if they have another Leer. They don't. Keep hitting our land drops. And then... Can... Bring back another eye twitch, perhaps. Surprised we still haven't drawn a second dollhouse by now. And then we'll pass with double hole breaker available. Opponent flashes back deluge. Could counter it by flashing in double hole breaker, but that kind of overextends into a doom scar, so we'll sit back for now. A single hole breaker can deal lethal damage, so better to play those out end of turn. Another deluge, sure. So our opponent got to see a lot of cards. Yeah, this wasn't an easy game to play, definitely had a lot of decisions. And it's not over yet. As our opponent replays Leer, which resolves. And then end of turn we'll flash in Hullbreaker. And probably flash in another. Which can now bounce itself back. Sure. So the same trick we did last time. And divide by zero to bounce back their own removal spell here. And then they could still kill the hole breaker here. But then they would be mostly tapped out. And another dollhouse. Okay. So, can I kill my opponent? It feels like I have the tools. If I bring back another creature, I guess I'm out of eye twitches. If I bring back another creature times two, they all grow up to three threes, and then Meat Hook Massacre can probably finish them off. So hoping they don't have another Fading Hope here. Or I could play Hole Breaker first just to bounce Leer and then make that play. Alright, doesn't look like they have a Fading Hope available here. So this should do it.
All right, sweet. So a marathon of a game here, but we got to see Dollhouse in action and it definitely shined here in the final stretch. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play and I'm not going to turn down Shambling Ghast into Deadly Dispute. And we should be able to pick up some lands afterwards. Might be a game where we just hard cast Hullbreaker Horror, or we could discard it to the Learn from Eye Twitch to then reanimate if we draw a Dollhouse. Well, let's see what we're up against. White, and hopefully initiate, so white aggro deck. Alright. We'll just pass it back for now. An Illuminarch Aspirant, so that I probably want to kill before it triggers. Nice. Got a Field of Ruin for Faceless Haven. Raidan we don't care too much about. I guess it makes our Dollhouse more expensive. But luckily no snow lands. And for now, got a couple of options. Still looking like hard casting Hullbreaker is going to be just fine. So to that end, maybe play Merchants plus Eye Twitch. And then next turn we could cast a hole breaker. Portable hole could exile eye twitch. Could sacrifice it in response. It's probably worth it because then it all sends up in the graveyard for our dollhouse. And then I can learn for environmental sciences to keep hitting my land drops. So we'll have to wait a bit longer on the hole breaker now. Another Luminarch, so I wouldn't mind eventually drawing a Meat Hook Massacre, for instance. But we should still have a bit of time here. Hunt for Specimens can also learn for Necrotic Fumes, Exile Raidan. And that also buys me a bit of time. Yeah, maybe that's fine for now. So we'll just have to deal with the Luminarch Aspirants, but all Breakers good at resetting all those plus one counters later. So still at a healthy life total, not under too much pressure. Although the adversary can pump their team. Still not quite enough to let both creatures attack, but they could pump initiate up to four power. They grow the Luminarch instead. Alrighty, so now what? Hunt for specimens. Can learn for maybe a mascot exhibition. Teaching is going to be difficult to leverage with her opponent on one card in hand. Could always go for introduction to prophecy as well. This turn we would Sciences plus Eye Twitch. Yeah, maybe I want to keep digging towards Meat Hook Massacre and a Dollhouse. And then for now, having the land drop available for next turn is probably worth it, so I'll hang on to the Prophecy even though it's less mana efficient to do this. Because I don't want to be forced to keep a uh, land on top with Prophecy to hit my land drop next turn. And then we can flash in the Hullbreaker, which can maybe ambush a larger ground creature as well. Another portable hole. Alright, I guess we'll do this again. And then now I can learn for Mascot Exhibition.
All right, so plenty of land drops available here. The ground is nicely stalled. So we can maybe jump, take four, gain one life. And then next turn the whole breaker is threatening a nice ambush. Opponent will be able to play around it since they know we're not casting Mascot Exhibition. But I think that's still okay. And then Dollhouse will be great as well here. We made sure to sacrifice all the copies of Eye Twitch instead of letting them get exiled. Opponent sends in the team. And hopefully no instant speed removal here. Might want to kill the adversary and bounce both Aspirant and Initiate next turn. And then a the question is if I want to jump with the Sculptor Merchant just to keep my life total high. Probably safer in case of a Mall of the Skyclaves out of nowhere. Sun Gold Sentinel. Could mess with our dollhouse plan somewhat. But we can just bounce everything here. Alright, so do we want to introduction to prophecy or dollhouse and get one trigger? If I dollhouse. I could get back an eye twitch, which I can then sacrifice to the merchant at some point. Although I wouldn't have the mana to do anything else after. Could also go for Shambling Gas, but it doesn't kill anything on the board. Yeah, I guess we'll Dollhouse. Returning Aspirants. And then bring back an Eye Twitch. And then we can just chill for now. So they do have Coven enabled on Sentinel. Can get a last attack in basically. Sacrifice Eye Twitch, which can learn once again and go for probably Sciences. And our opponent has seen enough here between Dollhouse, Hallbreaker, and all the card advantage we can generate. Our opponent's never going to recover. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Could use another cheap play on turn two. Of course, a Deadly Dispute would be high up on our list. But then Divide by Zero can discard any expensive creature I draw to then reanimate with Dollhouse. Gives us a bit of interaction. So, cheap plays are fine, expensive plays we can discard. Turn one island. Put on blue red, so the Epiphany matchup is probably not great. Although divide by zero helps. So I could divide by zero the iteration. It's not a big expensive play, but it does give me something to do right now. And um then the question is, what do I want to learn for? So our opponent can still play a land here. They would go down to four cards in hand. So teachings is unlikely to work out for me. Nothing I really want to discard for my hand, so I guess we'll take the introduction to prophecy. All right, merchants, not bad. Opponent actually didn't have a third land, so they needed iteration to hit their land drops. So it makes it even better that we countered it. 
Sideration probably hoping for two lands here. Wow, if they did not hit a land, so it looks like they're going to miss another land drop. That's unfortunate for our opponent. And in the meantime, we're ramping towards Holebreaker Horror. Introduction could try and find another Divide by Zero. Or a way to learn, although I can learn by discarding Holebreaker Horror to the Eye Twitch Sacrifice here. So I might want to resolve the Dollhouse now. And then next turn we can potentially do some shenanigans. Opponent has shown Prismari Command, I believe, so that is an answer to the Dollhouse. Alright, iteration number two. They probably find a land this time. Alright, there we go. Opponent's Grixis, so probably playing Leer as well. Opponent has to discard to hand size. Alrighty, so I've got some options. There's nothing to bounce right now with Holebreaker. Don't have any instants to go with it. So it might be better served just hard casting the Holebreaker and doing nothing with the Dollhouse right now. So we'll just hit for two. Otherwise I could have sacrificed Eye Twitch to the Merchant and then reanimate something. But a 1-1 Toxtril is not that impressive right now. So we'll pass it back. Opponent has a Demon Bolt for Skullport Merchants. That's acceptable. Just gives us something to bring back with Dollhouse now. And Hullbreaker threatens to close out the game pretty quickly. Opponent's got the Celestis, which gives us something to bounce. Right, opponent's got a Fading Hope. Fair enough. So now... Dollhouse, bring back Skullport Merchants. Wouldn't be able to replay Holebreaker. Although I can bring back Holebreaker with Dollhouse, I guess. If I sacrifice Eye Twitch to Skullport Merchant, learn and then bring it back. But then I won't have a way to cast a spell afterwards. Let's see, Merchant makes a treasure. Sacrifice Eye Twitch. Then I'll have two mana left. Yeah, that's not gonna work. So, yeah, I guess we'll maybe introduction. Finding a land, probably don't need Meat Hook Massacre. And then we'll bring back Skullport Merchant, which can still sacrifice the Eye Twitch. So the Fading Hope here saves our opponent from a quick death from Holebreaker. But our opponent's still pretty far behind because of that early mana stumble. Even though our deck is not particularly aggressive, so not the best at punishing those mana stumbles. Our opponent's still pretty far behind on mana resources. Burn the house down means we'll just sacrifice an eye twitch for value. And then do I want to get teachings or sciences? Guess our opponents tapped out. So teachings could work, assuming I draw land. Nah, we'll get sciences. Oh, opponent actually went for the three tokens. I was convinced they went for the 5 damage. Fair enough. I guess I should have waited a second and read what they were planning to do. Alright, so opponent goes for a bunch of 1-1s. So I can still grow the Skullport Merchant here by getting back Eye Twitch. 
It is very tempting to just cast Toxrill for 7 mana, clean up all the devils. So that's certainly on the table as well. Although maybe your opponents will commit an Alrun's Epiphany and make a few more bird tokens before Toxrill wipes everything away. Yeah, that might be worth it. And then for now maybe just keep up our mana for Hullbreaker, which also maybe threatens like a counter spell which the opponent will need to respect. Opponent sends in the Devils. So my guess is they have a uh, Epiphany and they're just going to cast it to take an extra turn here if I take it. Meaning I should just flash in the Horror now. Then they might change their play based on that. But I also don't want Hall of the Storm Giants hitting me in the face. So I think flashing in Horror to block a Devil's fine. And we might see a Bounce Spell in response. Devil goes face. And there's the Epiphany. Alright. Hopefully they can chain together too many of those. And the rest can have a look. Take away Sciences or Dispute. Dispute being an instant makes it more valuable with Holdbreaker. Alright, and our opponent concedes upon seeing Toxtral the Corrosive in hand. Yeah. Overall, this uh, blue-black sacrifice deck has been quite impressive. Being able to reanimate Hullbreaker and Toxrill means we can get them online faster against the aggressive decks like Mono White. By discarding them, we can also dodge something like Elite Spellbinder, exiling them and making them cost 9 mana, which can be pretty rough otherwise. And then, of course, we still have our game plan of Meat Hook Massacre, early sacrifice creatures, which can slow down those aggressive decks as well. And as we could see in the control matchup, the Dollhouse really shines, being able to give all our creatures a second lease on life, and then especially with those creatures providing even more value when they enter the battlefield or die, makes it quite powerful. And then once you get multiple Dollhouses going, it can also close out the game very quickly, thanks to those hasty tokens pumping each other. So overall, pretty pleased with how this deck ended up. The initial builds of Dollhouse that I tried were pretty embarrassing in comparison, so I'm glad that I persevered and ended up with this. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.